Good morning. I'm Jean Tung, one of the pediatric gastroenterologists here at the Mayo Clinic. Today I would like to discuss a study at looking at the intestinal microbiome of children after using antibiotics. The microbiome refers to the organisms that live within our body. We are usually referring to bacteria, but it can include viruses and fungi. Researchers have discovered several patterns about the bacterial microbiome in our intestines. Some bacteria are more beneficial, while others are more pro-inflammatory. We each have our own bacterial microbiome pattern in our intestines that starts shortly after we are born. Several things can change the proportion of bacteria that tilt towards beneficial or inflammatory bacteria. First, whether you're born vaginally or by C-section actually affects your microbiome. Second, a number of studies have shown that diet can affect the proportion of healthy or unhealthy bacteria. And third, and not surprisingly, antibiotics that you take to kill bacterial infections will change your microbiome. There is limited research in how long antibiotics can affect our intestinal microbiome after taking a course of antibiotics. To help answer this question, researchers in Finland collected the stools of 142 Finnish children aged 2 to 7 years that were in the same daycare system. They looked at the microbiome in these stool samples and also looked at what antibiotics these children had taken since they were born. Overall, the diversity of the intestinal bacteria was decreased in the children who had taken antibiotics within the prior six months. In addition, the proportion of more beneficial bacteria decreased, while those that were more pro-inflammatory increased. When the researchers looked specifically at the antibiotics that were prescribed to these children, they found that much of the changes were due to the antibiotics azithromycin and clarithromycin. This change in bacteria pattern lasted up to two years. In contrast, in the children who were prescribed penicillin, amoxicillin, or augmentin, the effects of the change in microbiome pattern lasted 6 to 12 months. Now, all of these antibiotics are typically prescribed for ear infections, sinus infections, and pneumonia. The drugs penicillin and amoxicillin are better for strep throat, but azithromycin may be used instead when patients have an allergic reaction to penicillins. In this group of children, eight went on to develop asthma, and nine became overweight. Their microbiome seemed to have different proportions of bacteria types than their healthy counterparts. In other studies, we have seen that patients who develop autoimmune diseases, such as inflammatory bowel disease, have an altered microbiome that seems to be more pro-inflammatory. Now, we certainly can't always avoid using antibiotics for serious bacterial infections. However, it is helpful to remember that not all infections are bacterial or require antibiotics. If you do need antibiotics for yourself or for your children, this study suggests that we may be better off using penicillin or amoxicillin whenever possible. The use of probiotics is a whole separate discussion, and it's not always certain that this will be helpful. However, I hope this has been helpful to you today.